This lecture is on anatomy and the imaging of the adrenal glands and we will be focusing on the different imaging techniques but we will be leaving the pathologies out and we will be discussing it in a separate chapter. Regarding the basic embryology of the adrenal glands, as you all know that adrenal glands are a paired structure seen in the bilateral uh, suprarenal regions. See, it has basically two components, the cortex, which is the outer part of the gland. Uh, this outer part is the cortex and then it has a medulla, which is the central part, this pink region. The important thing is that the cortex is derived basically from the mesoderm, whereas the medulla has a separate region and it's arising from the neural crest cells, which is an ectodermal derivative. It basically consists of three parts. One is the body and then it has two limbs, the medial and the lateral limb. In a neonate, important thing is that it is relatively large structure when compared with the size of an adult. Like if we have a relationship between the size of the adrenal gland with the kidney, so the adrenal gland is 10 to 20 times larger in neonate patient and it's almost like one third of the size of the kidney as well. Now in this case we can utilize the ultrasound for the imaging of the adrenal gland. Now if you focus on this region, this is basically the kidney and just above the kidney you can see a triangular structure which has a central echogenic part which is the central part of the gland and then you have an hypoechoic or a transonic uh, zone and this part is the liver and this is the kid you can easily image using an ultrasound in a neonatal patient. Now using this image you can just have an idea like how the adrenal gland is basically looking on the ultrasound. Now in adult patient it weighs like 4 grams and in this adult patient the medulla is approximately 10% of the total size of the gland and gland is surrounded by fat and is seen in the perinephric space and is enclosed within the perineal fascia as well. Now when we come to the adrenal gland regions, so the outer part or the cortex has basically three regions. This yellow line area is the zona glomerulosa which is producing the aldosterone and then you have a zona fasciculata and then this blue colored area this is the zona reticularis which produces the ACTH. Now the inner part of this pink region this is the medulla which is derived from neuroectrodermal tissue from neural crest cells and this basically produces norepinephrine and epinephrine and the byproduct which is released in the urine is the VMA which we'll see that it can be used in the diagnosis of the medullary tumors. If you have an, a tumor originating from the medulla, it will have different characteristics than the adrenal cortical tumors. And most commonly we see pheochromocytoma, which predominantly originates from the medulla of the adrenal gland, whereas the other regions are going to give rise to adrenal cortical tumors. Regarding the size of the adrenal gland, the basic rule is going to be that in the length it can vary up to 4 cm and whereas the each limb is normally around 5 to 6 mm thick and the body or where the limbs join the body, that area should not measure more than 10 to 12 mm in maximum size. Now we come to the left adrenal gland. If you can just focus on this region, this is the part of the left adrenal gland. Now there are a few anatomical relationships which are important whenever we are going to recognize the gland and it is in front of the upper pole of left kidney like you can normally see the a part of the kidney in the image where you can see the adrenal gland and it is posterior in relationship to the pancreas and the splenic vessels whereas in, in the case of right adrenal gland important thing is it is suprarenal in location relatively superior to the right kidney 
it is medial to the right lobe of liver this is the right lobe of liver and you can see that it is more medially located as well as now in comparison with the crust of the diaphragm it is lateral to the crust of the diaphragm and important relationship which you will see is that it is always like posteriorly located to the IVC so IVC can you be used as a landmark for the right adrenal gland and one uh, important thing is that normally the thickness of the limbs of the adrenal gland is almost in similar thickness with the crust of the diaphragm so you can use in your daily routine practice that if uh, the thickness of the crust of the diaphragm which is this part is equal to or is about similar to the limb thickness of the limb of the adrenal gland so it's normal and regarding the adrenal gland enhancement normally it is a soft tissue structure so it in a non-contrast CT it is approximately 30 HU where it rises up to 80 to 100 Hounsfield units on post contrast images and in post contrast images it is more easy to identify in thin patients and now this is a CT scan in a portal venous phase uh, if you want to find first we'll just focus on the left adrenal gland now just follow this uh, left kidney and as I'm going up you can see that as the superior pole of the left kidney is approaching this level and you can see that there is a structure just at, at the level of the left adrenal gland and is extending in this region so in this case it's more important that it is seen at the level of the superior pole of the left adrenal uh, left kidney and is also seen in just in relation to the splenic vein as well as the uh, tail of the pancreas it is also obviously laterally seen in relation to the left crest of the diaphragm now if I go to the right focus on the right adrenal gland you can just see that the this is the right kidney the kidney has almost finished and there is no part of the renal tissue in this region and then afterwards the adrenal gland is arising and is located in this region uh, and second thing which we also that it is always going to be in a posterior lateral relation to the IVC this is the inferior vena cava and as I browse up you can see that it is also seen just posterior lateral to the IVC and secondly obviously along the lateral side of the crust of the diaphragm and to the medial side of the right lobe of the along the right lobe of the liver and these are the coronal images and if I these are the coronal images of the same patient and if you can focus on this this is the right adrenal gland this is the body this is the lateral limb and this is the medial limb of the gland uh, on the left side you can see that this is the body as well as the medial and the this is the body and this is the medial limb and then this is the lateral limb these can be uh, of uh, can be seen in the shape of a comma or a inverted v uh, endotonial region on MRI, the sequences used T1, T2 are um, the adrenal glands are relatively low uh, signal as compared to the adjacent fat and both adrenals are well seen on post catalinium fat suppressed sequence. These are the images of another patient which are of MRI and on MRI you can see that in comparison to the perinephric fat, this part which is the left suprarenal or adrenal gland is seen and again obviously it is in close relation to the superior pole of the left kidney where it uh, should be located and you can easily appreciate that as a relatively high point tense structure in comparison with the perirenal fat on the right side as well you can appreciate this uh, right suprarenal gland which is in say, uh, superior relation to the kidney not at the same site and this is the lateral limb medial limb and you can appreciate uh, the body as well in MRI post contrast fat sat images uh, can show the bilateral adrenal glands in more details now in this case this is the IVC just posterior and medial posterior to the IVC and medial to the right uh, lobe of liver and lateral to the crust of the diaphragm you can see another triangular structure this is the body this is the medial limb lateral limb and you can appreciate that it is significantly enhancing and is surrounded by a uh, fat 
and on the left side you can appreciate again that as the kidney is going to rise you can just appreciate that structure which is again a bit variable uh, in shape but still you can easily see that the it is body medial and lateral limb is seen so in mri you can preferably use the post contrast uh, fat set images uh, to identify any abnormality or any tumor in this region senses regarding the imaging studies the different studies which are used the ultrasound is not a primary method of detection in the adults however it can be used in neonates ct is normally a method investigation of choice in adults mri has its limitation obviously but if it's available it can be used mibg studies are used for detection of medullary tumors such as pheochromocytomas because it is a non epinephrine analog and is can be used for its detection fdg pet is a, a good study especially when you need to characterize uh, between the adenomas and the metastasis which we will see in the coming lectures regarding the blood circulation the arterial supply is derived from a plexus which is just formed adjacent to it and is be that plexus is being uh, supplied by the inferior phrenic artery directly a branch from the aorta as well as the ipsilateral renal artery in the venous drainage system you have separate venous drainage system on the right side the adrenal vein drains directly into the ivc whereas on the left side it drains into the left renal vein and that renal vein then drain into the ivc so now if i conclude it with my take home points these are small paired structures cortex is 90% medulla is 10% right adrenal is superior to the kidney and behind the ivc as we have seen left adrenal is almost at the level of the superior pole of left kidney and in adults you have to use either ct or mri Uh, for the detection or if you for the visualization whereas in neonates ultrasound can be used thanks a lot for your listening and i hope you like the lecture and it would be great if you could let me know your feedback on these lectures have a very nice day